right before COVID, I was actually doing a lot of product research. And so that meant I was on a bunch of Zoom meetings. And like I was trying to talk to people and take notes at the same time. And I'm like hurry typing up notes. And then after the meeting, I'm like cleaning up those notes so that they make any sense. And I just felt like this is such a terrible process. There were some tools that were doing stuff like this, recording transcription, uh, but they're really focused on salespeople only. And they're really expensive. And we say, gosh, why are they so expensive? Well, because transcription is really expensive. And so we kind of this thesis that like, we think transcription is going to be, become really cheap. This is a product that people were charging $150 a month for, but we said, we're going to yeah. give it away for free um, because we think that cost curve will catch up. By the time we have enough usage, the cost curve will come down. And we think this thing will just spread like wildfire and then we'll drop in AI when it gets really good and it'll get even better. That was kind of the thesis. I like to think about metrics and I is I like to think about metrics back to front. So I, I always say I want to solve mm-hmm. one key metric at a time in the business. I see a lot of people that like start nice. off and they're like, we're trying to monetize and we're trying to prove engagement and we're trying to fix our onboarding. I'm like, pick one, right? And in Fathom's case, it was like we we I always start with free user retention first. I'm a big mm. fan of monetize. We did monetize for until we were two years in. Um, I'm a I big love- fan of delayed monetization because I think it's hard enough to get people to use the thing, but then to get them also to pay for it, getting them to use it's hard enough barrier for most products, in my opinion. And I'm generally a, yeah. of the belief that if someone's using your product day in, day out, you'll eventually find a way to charge them or you'll charge people like them. So right. we focused on retention first and really f- figured out retention. Once we figure out retention in that beta period with those 50 users I mentioned, then great, we launched, we saw all those users, we saw that onboarding didn't work. And then we got really smart about, okay, let's make sure onboarding works really well. Great. Now that onboarding works really well, let's focus on referral loops and like virality. Mm. Oh, wait, the market shifted. No one cares about growth. Put referral loops on the shelf and go focus on monetization. And so I think in all these cases, we then, there's a top level metric and we go build a dashboard of here's all the things that contribute into that metric. And every day, I think on the onboarding thing, I paired with one of our engineers and we spent three Mm. months and every day we were just like, okay, let's look at the numbers today. What feels like the weakest spot we could push on? Oh, let's go get rid of that page. Let's go simplify this page. And I just, there was a, there was like a, you know, PRD probably notion page, like about five pages long at the end of it. Just here's all the bullet points of things we do every day. And so, and then yeah. check the numbers. So I think that approach to kind of like data driven things, again, you not most, many, most startups can't do it at an early stage, which is why you've got to go with your gut. But if you have enough data, Obviously, it's a <laughs> the way better way to operate, sort of thing, than trust and verify. No, totally. And data driven is uh, we all want to be data driven, but especially in a startup level, knowing you don't have the scale, knowing you don't have the numbers, I really encourage a lot of them to 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 what you're doing you, and to practice you do, which is really reach out, even if you got a little group of people 